Hey everyone, this is Mark, and I am back with episode 3 of my Stoneblock Minecraft Let's Play series. Uh, today, I am going to take a quick look at things I've done since last episode, and then we'll get on with a couple quick upgrades on equipment we have. So the first thing that's changed is I went ahead and made some iron meshes for some of our uh, sieves because I wanted to get some of the better results that you get using the better meshes. Uh, and I've been doing some grinding. There's some ores that I've gotten and a bunch of resources. Uh, you can see that I did some dirt. So I've got these diorite and granite uh, and andesite pebbles which you can craft into the related stones. Uh, I know that that's not, those object, those stones are not uh, real interesting to a lot of people, but they, uh, you know, they give us something to work with that doesn't look like regular stone. So, uh, got some lapis, got some redstone from sifting dust with the better meshes, a uh, bunch of different seeds, and a few random resources, uh, emeralds, some Certus Quartz and Charged Certus Quartz, um, Coal, and yeah, a little Glowstone, uh, and some Blaze Powder. So we've got some resources to work with, and we have a bunch of ore here to deal with, but I really don't want to sit at the smeltery and uh, do it all manually, because as you know, if you have stuff in the smeltery, you have to use the ingot cast to pull it out piece by piece. So the first thing I want to do is uh, automate the smeltery so I don't have to do that. And before I start that little project, because I actually have gold in there for another thing, uh, which we'll get to in a minute, I am going to go over here and show you how to make a tool part uh, cast. So I'm making a sword and I've made a stone sword blade here. And if we put this in the casting basin and we have gold in here. And if you recall, we made this ingot cast out of gold. I can pour the gold over the sword blade and that's going to give me a sword cast. So that's how you make tools, uh, tinkers tools out of metal. And obviously one of the projects I have in mind today is making a sword with some metal. But for now, I am, uh, now that the uh, smeltery is empty, I'm gonna go ahead and set up some automation. And there's two parts to that. And the first part is you need to pour material out of the smeltery automatically. And to do that, I'm gonna use a redstone clock. And the redstone clocks are pretty e easy to make. I have the materials here. So we're going to use the extra utilities two version. And as you can see, it's just some stone, some redstone, a redstone torch. And I'm going to go ahead and make two of those. And that emits a constant redstone, well, constant pulse. Yeah, uh, it, it emits a redstone pulse and that cycles the faucets, which cycle out the materials in there. So we don't always want those both on. As I mentioned, the casting basin will like do partial pours and not fill up if you don't have enough material. So I am going to make a couple levers. And those will let us uh, control these clocks. So oh, I must have animations off. Um, Normally that's animating. Ah, you can see this one's off. You can notice that it's dark versus this one, which is on and light. Uh, I'm going to turn them both off for now. Uh, and I'm going to grab some. What do we want to do? Let's go ahead and, and process some iron. I did upgrade this to too high now, so it'll hold, I think it's 18 ore chunks. Uh, which gives us a little faster processing. Um, I'm probably going to have to stick another bucket of lava in here. I'll probably have to make some more lava, which is another part of today's episode, I hope. Assuming I have enough time. So this is the other part that I want to automate today. 
Um, so if we look in here, you can see all this is melting. And once it all melts, it's going to turn into molten iron in here. And just like last time, it's going to sit there until we do something with it, except now we can automatically do something with it. So there we go. We've got four blocks of iron in there. So if I turn this on, it is going to pour that automatically. And you're saying, well, okay, so it poured it, but you still have to empty it. Well, that is pretty easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a chest between these and get down in here and I have two hoppers and if I put hoppers connected to the chest the hoppers will automatically pull the items out of both the casting basin and the casting table and put them in this chest so there you go automated smeltery you've probably seen it before but that's a step-by-step -step on how to do it so that's part one. The next thing I want to do is put the rest of this iron in so I can start actually processing all this stuff. Um, I made this sword blade cast because I need a sword. Uh, you notice there's this little chunk of uh, cobblestone sitting here and you may wonder why. Well, we are now getting one of the annoying things of this pack, which is the Frenderman or the uh, advanced Enderman spawns, which show up anywhere, including at areas with high light levels, and they just kind of hang around and make annoying sounds. So I set this up so you know Endermen are three tall; they can't get in here, and I can kill them safely by looking at them, getting them mad at me, and then they come over and I can whack them to death. Um, Unfortunately, my pickaxe does very little damage. I did make a mattock, which does a bit more damage, but you know, still not great. So the stone axe is actually doing more damage, but it's uh, slow. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make a sword with a silver blade, which is it's not fantastic, but for the materials we have, it's pretty good. Now, you you know that we have this sword blade cast, so I'm going to make the other parts, which is a guard, and I need some wood. So I'm going to throw some wood in here to make a tool rod, and those are the three parts you need for a sword. The blade, the, uh, the tool rod, and the guard. And since we're pouring iron automatically. I'm going to turn this clock off and I'm going to stick one silver chunk in here. Um, as you can see the material cost for this is two which is two ingots. Uh, one ore recall makes two ingots each because we're ore doubling and uh, Right now the iron is on the bottom, so I don't really want to pour that. I can make an iron blade, but I'm going to swap the silver down to the bottom and then pour that. Uh, and I've just poured a uh, silver ingot, which is not what I wanted to do. Oh well. Uh, let me melt this again. Um, so having the clock with the lever on it is a convenient way to control what you're pouring and when. And so if you have just a bunch of stuff that you're pouring ingots, you can do it pretty quickly without um, without any manual intervention. All right, now we've got two ingots of silver. I'm gonna pour the blade. And the blade's gonna get sucked down into that chest. I'm gonna put the ingot cast back and now we have pure iron. So I'm gonna start that up again. And I'm going to just stick that in there. That chest is going to need an upgrade pretty quickly. Um, lead and iron and say are safe, and silver is also safe. So I'm just going to chuck some more materials in here and start making some ingots out of all this stuff. Um, if I go over here to the tool station, I can pick the broadsword, and you can see there's a recipe. And again, this is not a great broadsword because, you know, it's a stone guard, but it does have attack seven and it has plus five versus undead because it has holy from the silver blade. So that at least will be slightly useful.
it'll it'll do some damage more than more than my uh, other tools are doing. Um, the other thing I did while I was uh, between episodes, I made a little bit of a mob grinder, and we can see now that it's uh, the sword works. It's not super uh, super effective, but it will kill monsters. And ah, good, we're getting Inferium already. This is one of the reasons I wanted to uh, get the mob grinder set up is because mystical agriculture, we need some Inferium to get started with that, and mobs are one of the chief sources. So that is why I'm doing a mob farm, even though it's a basic, you know, this is just a one wide track here. You can see um, it's dark. I can get to it. They can't see me. I can hack their feet and kill them and generally get the items that they drop. Um, so, you know, manual process, but for now, it'll do. Um, let's see, what else do I want to do? Oh, I know what I need to do. I did complete a quest. I don't know why that keeps opening on the smelter request. Um, I did make the iron meshes so we can claim that reward, and let's go ahead and see what we got today. Uh, we got another diamond furnace which is, as as we've seen already, the diamond furnaces are awesome, so I'm just gonna get rid of that and stick another diamond furnace here. Uh, one of the things I'm gonna do is probably automate charcoal into that by using a bonsai pot. Um, you can see this bonsai pot's been doing a good job of accumulating wood for us. It's a bit slow, but, uh, you know, it's getting the job done. We're getting plenty of apples to eat. We've got sticks. Uh, we've got leaves, which we can actually turn into dirt if we want, and uh, it, it's fine. So we're going to stick this stuff in here, because the furnace we can eventually use to craft into something else. And let's see. I think we do not have Eulorium yet. Hmm. thought I got Eulorium. Let me see if I can get some Eulorium real quick. I'd like to get nine pieces of Eulorium because I want to upgrade our lava gen with the faster Eulorium block. I saw one go by there. Uh, we may have to do more than this. So the next thing I want to do is automate the lava production to feed the smeltery. Uh, right now I'm having to manually dump uh, buckets of, didn't quite get enough manually dump buckets of lava you know I'm, I'm putting stone in the barrel over there I'm pulling lava buckets out and dumping those into the smeltery so what I'd like to do is automate that so I don't have to deal with it I just have an infinite source of lava and uh, it's automatically filling the smeltery at the same time uh, of course one short let's do another half stack Come on, lucky rolls. Give me what I need. There we go. We got nine. I'm going to throw those in there real quick. Smelt those down. So, all right. I'm going to go ahead and dig out a little space to work with here. And I'm going to hide all this in the wall. As you can see, this pickaxe is not particularly fast, but it gets the job done. That's probably the next, the next little project is probably going to be upgrading uh, the tools that I have to something a little better. Um, eventually, I'm going to want to make the Tinker's Construct hammer, which gives me a three by three mining tool. Uh, there's nothing over there. I'm going to make a little more room here. Stick a torch. Um, right. So the way I want to do this is I'm going to empty this lava out so I don't waste it. Because lava is easy, but it's, uh, you know, not that easy. Um, so there's our nine. 
uh, nine eulorium, which I can convert to a block of eulorium. And a block of eulorium serves, acts as a heat source. And unlike the lava, this is a, which the lava is 3x, this is a 20x heat source. So I'm going to want to produce lava and pump it into both. Uh, I really need to just pump it into the smeltery tank because you can use a bucket and pull lava out of there. So that's a that's a lava source for me as well as for the smeltery. So there's the eulorium block. So if I go pick this up without dropping it in the lava, yes. And I'm going to close this. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is pick you up. Close that hole. So I put you here and stick some stone, cobblestone in you. And as you can see, that's rate 20x and it's making lava pretty quickly. Um, so there's two things we need. We need an infinite cobblestone source to feed this. And we need a way to get it into the, uh, the tank. And I think, yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, I am going to, actually, I'm going to move this before I set this up. I'm just going to move it back one. Give me a little more room to work. And I don't know why I have all that junk in my inventory. I'm going to get rid of this stuff. Storage is getting tight. Uh, let's go ahead and dump the silver in here. Um, you recall we had this all filled and we were pouring stuff. You can see it does a fairly decent job of uh, getting rid of content or getting rid of uh, ingots pretty quickly. Turning ingots into ore, or turning ore into ingots, I should say. Um, right, so now we have uh, crucible and we need to put get the lava out of it and uh, dump it into the smeltery. So let's make some transfer. Transfer components. We're going to need some pipes. Which, all right, so I need some redstone and I need some stone slabs. And I used all the stone slabs when I made the uh, monster, the mob grinder. Mob grinder, yeah, that's a little... Uh, over, overstating what it is but you know what I mean so we're gonna make some transfer pipes which are easy way to move stuff around and then we're gonna make uh, fluid transport nodes and what those do is if I stick a fluid transport node on there I can then pull lava out of this into the smeltery automatically. Um, you can see that's uh, got room for half a bucket. Uh, you can see that the lava is going away and this is getting full. So there's that. So the next part of this is we need to feed this stone. So we know how to generate stone automatically. We can do it right here. We take this. We put that there, I think, is a decent spot. Um, I'm going to pick up that storage drawer. And to do that, I am going to make a chest transporter. This is just a cheap wooden one, which only lasts for one transport. And it also gives you nice debuffs, slowness, and uh, something else. And as you can see, it breaks Im immediately. So now we need to dump the stone into the uh, crucible automatically. And to do that, we're going to make a item transport node, which is easy. And we stick that on the side of there and we stick another pipe there and I'm going to break that connection eventually. And 
there we have it. We have automated uh, lava. We have automated uh, stone going into the crucible to generate our lava, which is using this 20x uh, yellow orium block to, to generate. So we're easily going to be able to serve up whatever we need for this uh, for the smeltery. That's what it's called. Uh, so really the only thing I want to do here is this is, you know, this is kind of out of the way and I don't mind having this storage here because if something happens, it's a little bit of a backup, but I'd also like a drawer out front that I can just get to easily. So I'm going to go ahead and make another storage drawer. stick it out I guess I won't break that link um, where do I want to put this so I kind of planned on sealing that off well let's see this is one of those what does it look like things I don't really need to see the uh, I do want to see the tank there because I want to be able to pull lava from it. So if I do this, this will start to get stone. Um, we can pull our lava from here. We can pull stone from here. And we don't have to see any of this. Uh, and I'm going to leave it open for now because the next thing I want to do is automate obsidian. I'm not 100% happy with how that uh, those pipes go, but that's okay for now. I kind of like to separate those so we're not crossing uh, purposes, but because these are right here, that's difficult. Uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to put another storage drawer over here. Uh, wood. I'm just going to make another storage drawer real quick. I'm going to stick it there. Did that go down? No, it didn't. Since you don't want to go down correctly, I will stick you there. So, obsidian. We're going to take this stone barrel, and I talked about this a little bit before. Basically, a stone barrel that's filled with lava, if you put water on top of this, it will uh, generate obsidian. So, what we're going to do is we'll stick, this is going to get squeezy tight in here. This is why you hot, oops. Wow, what is that? <laughs> I always love it when you stick stuff on a torch. Um, let's see. The stone barrel, I'm going to pull items out of there and I'm going to put them into this chest. Uh, it's not going to pull lava out because this is an item transfer node. Um, and what I need to do now is I need to put a ring around that so I can hang some lava in there or water in there. And I think I'm going to do that with some slabs. This is going to be kind of ugly, but no one cares because it's hidden. So if I put this here, here, this side is blocked off because of the pipes. So I can just, I'm going to stick a pipe here real quick and just stick a slab on top of it and then eliminate that. Um, and then I need the water and I got rid of my bucket because uh, it was part of the recipe. So I need another bucket. It was part of the recipe for the fluid transfer notes. 
So I'm going to get a bucket here. I'm going to open this up so I can actually see what I'm doing. And let's do this, this. You can see it's making obsidian. And that obsidian is ending up here. And that's going to go through a lot of lava, but that's not a big deal because we have infinite lava coming. And that is pretty much done. So I'm going to close this off. And we never have to look back there again. And we have infinite cobble and infinite lava or infinite uh, obsidian. Uh, and infinite cobble, infinite lava, and inf infinite obsidian. So let me go ahead and aluminum and gold. I think aluminum and gold are safe. Should be. The aluminum is probably going to be gone before the gold even melts. That's one of those examples of different melting speeds. And you can see the ingots form up really fast too. Let's find out if I was right. Yep, they're safe. Nothing is nothing is forming an alloy in here, which is what I was concerned about. Uh, so that is some automation out of the way. Um, let me go away for a minute and figure out what I want to do next. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I did figure out some quick little thing to do here. Uh, clay. We, I showed you how to make clay, which is basically putting dust in a water-filled bucket. Um, so there's two ways to speed that up. Do I have clay? I only have three clay. So the first thing is make some more clay because I am going to make a block that is going to help us with this problem. And if you've played modded Minecraft and you know that I need an infinite water source here, you probably know that I'm going to make the sink from cooking with blockheads, which is a nice infinite water source. And if I remember right, it is just five blocks of terracotta. Oh, a little bit of iron and a water bucket. So we can do all that. Do this. We have five blocks of clay, which we can turn into five blocks of terracotta. And we can make a sink. So the sink does two things. It, uh, it serves as an infinite water source, so I can actually just get rid of you and put you down and the other thing you can do with the sink is you can dump any liquid in the sink and it goes away so it's essentially a trash can for liquids so I am gonna go ahead and set this up to automatically fill oops that's not what I want to automatically fill this with water and the next thing I need to do is, this is kind of a cheaty automation. It's not complete. Yeah, it's not a complete uh, automated system. Uh, don't have enough to make more than one, so let's just make a quick chest. I'm going to make a hopper here. Put the hopper on top. Uh, I need another chest. Planning. Planning is the word I'm looking for. Stick that there, and then if I do the item conduit and a pipe into this chest, it's not going to pull anything out until I take some dust. And if I throw the dust in this hopper, it's going to start dumping it in here as soon as it fills with water and making clay for us. So 
it's not fully automated. I still have to manually put dust in here, but because we don't have any way to automatically create dust yet, that's kind of the best we can do. Um, I think I should probably also automate one of these furnaces to just be a charcoal uh, charcoal producer because that'll keep my other furnace running. And these, these are nice and fast, so for manual smelting, they're really uh, quick. Uh, I should probably do the tiny charcoal recipe in there somehow. Um, I can probably use an analog crafter for that. Yeah, I can make an analog crafter to do that. That's that's pretty easy. Um, so I think I've actually covered everything I wanted to cover in this episode. We got the smeltery completely automated. Uh, you can, oh, I know what I'm still doing. One of the things I noticed was we didn't finish the smeltery quest because we never made enough seared bricks in one pass to trigger the quest and because it's hidden off the bottom of the page here. So now we can claim that. Um, so let's look at what we got. Oops, what we got out of this loot chest. We got a flask of adrenaline, which is haste, which is not particularly useful. I don't think we have any other quests ready to go. Um, oh, the nether. We need 10 obsidian, which we definitely have. Oops. I don't want to do I don't want to take everything out of there because I don't want to unlock that um, I will make a key for those so I can lock so that's 10 obsidian I also need a flint and steel and I don't have any flint here Let's just grab a flint I don't have any particular burning desire to go to the nether but this is a quest that will give us a quest reward so we can see what we get in this loot chest and another flask of adrenaline. They really want me to go faster, I guess. Um, not sure what's on the agenda for next time. I'm probably going to have to expand the base and do some uh, digging to make uh, probably a garden area. I will spend some time off camera killing some mobs so we can get some uh, bones and more inferium and uh, mob drops I already got a bone because a random skeleton appeared when I was uh, doing other things uh, and I'll probably grind some more resources getting pretty close to the point that I can do some real basic power generation and automation uh, we have plenty of we look at power generation we have a whole bunch of basic generators here um, I also want to get a bit of a garden started so we have some food other than the baked apples which are fine but uh, there are better food options out there uh, so I think that's about it for now Wow there's a lot of seared stone in there um, seared stone is actually a nice building material so I'm probably going to incorporate that into some of the base design uh, speaking of which I am actually going to do something more than just basic stone walls I just haven't devoted the time and energy to it because I'm a little wor more worried about getting the raw materials going so we have stuff to build with so um, I want to set up a bunch of a uh, bunch more bonsai pots so we can get some different wood going we have don't forget we have all the uh, all the various vanilla saplings uh, mob drops will give us loot bags which give us access to slimy saplings I think and maybe some others so we'll have some building materials we can play with uh, we also have the various uh, the granite andesite and uh, whatever the third one's called I never remember um, we don't get marble out of this, but we do get granite and andesite at least. I thought there was a third one we got out of that. But uh, anyhow, I'm kind of babbling now. So I'm going to sign off at that point. This is Mark, and this is the end of episode three of Stoneblock. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, give me a like and uh, maybe subscribe if you want. 
uh, leave a comment if you have any suggestions or thoughts. Uh, hopefully I have done everything right here and I'm not steering anybody wrong with information. Uh, if you have something you'd like to see me do, uh, go ahead and leave me a comment with uh, about that too. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.